In this video, I'm going to go over several tips and tricks from Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald that you probably missed in your last playthrough. Every game in this series has quite the handful of items, upgrades, and general experiences that can be pretty hard to encounter without going out of your way or using a walkthrough. The Gen 3 games are no different, and there are plenty of secrets to explore and uncover. So let's get into it. Oh, and a quick side note before we begin, I made sure that every single tip in this video can be utilized before the post game. So I hope all of my fellow Nuzlockers out there can find something useful here as well. Now, let's get started. Tip number one. Gym badges are more than just milestones. I'm willing to bet that a large chunk of you have forgotten this one, because I still do all of the time. Did you know that half the badges acquired in these games give you Pokemon a 10% boost to a specific stat? Well, if you didn't, now you know. And to be honest, it can make a pretty big difference depending on how you choose to play these games. Have you ever wondered why your Torkoal is always faster than Flannery's? You could thank Watson's badge for that. Have you ever thought about that one time your Pokemon survived Winona's Earthquaking Altaria with just one HP left? Dad's badge came in pretty clutch in that one. Have you ever considered why Psychic-type Pokemon become so much better after getting Tate and Liza's badge- Oh wait, never mind, they still suck in these games, but my point still stands. Even Roxanne's badge gives a sweet 10% increase to attack on all of your Pokemon for the rest of the run. These effects are sweet, and very easy to miss despite the fact that the game tells you about these boosts immediately after acquiring each badge. But while I was willing to guess that many of us would have forgotten about this feature, I'm also betting many of you didn't even know it existed. Because let's be honest, even on our GBAs, most of us smashed that A button until it practically fell out of the console. Tip number two. Stealing is fun, and useful as all hell in the Hoenn region. TM46 is definitely no secret to the Pokemon community, and ironically for this list, is one of those items that's extremely difficult to miss. I mean, I can understand if you don't pick it up on your way in, but on your way out? This dude sticks out like a sore thumb and might as well be holding up a cardboard sign that says, talk to me for a free item. While Thief may be incredibly easy to acquire in these games, its usefulness is massive. You can use it to steal citrus berries from Jim Lee, Leaders, heart scales from love discs, and even more powerful items from random trader battles. I think the most common one that players point out is the black belt that you can steal from black belt knobs Machoke on Route 115, which is super cool. But did you know you could also steal a dragon fang from Dragon Tamer Nicholas in Meteor Falls? Or how about a smoke ball from Ninja Boy Lao's Weezing? Is money your fancy? I mean, the move is called Thief after all. Rich Boy Winston and Lady Cindy's Zigzagoons both hold nuggets and they offer some of the highest payouts of any trainer in the entire game. Just make sure to talk to them after obtaining the Pokenav. But once you have that, hop on your bike and match call them to your heart's content. Steal their nugget, kill their pet, take all their money, and boom, now who's the rich boy? There are also a ton of incredible items that have a chance to be held by wild Pokemon. You want a Blossom before the fourth gym? Steal a Sunstone from Solrock and Meteor Falls. Is your entire team super slow? Wild Sandshrew have a 5% chance of holding a Quick Claw. You want to evolve your Seedra? I, I, I mean, yeah, you do. All you gotta do is brutally mug several cute, adorable little horsies, and the list just goes on and on. Moonstones from Lunatone, King's Rock from Hariyama, and several other Pokemon have a chance of holding all the stat boosting items. Oh, and here's a bonus tip for you. If you have a Pokemon with compound eyes leading your party, the chances these wild Pokemon will hold their respective items increases to 20%. So as it turns out, Ninkata does have a use. TM46, aka Thief, is an incredible pickup, and is capable of a lot more than you think. Tip number three, a berry a day. One could argue that berries are the held item of choice in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald playthroughs. With so many different effects and functions at your fingertips, you're able to customize your strategy on an even deeper level. Some of the more powerful varieties include citrus, lepa, persim, and lumberries, for example, most of which can be obtained at various points throughout your journey, but some are a bit more sparse than others, and some can't even be obtained from a berry patch in the overworld. The lumberry is a great example, as it cannot be obtained from a berry patch and it's one of the more useful berries to have in the whole game. So then, how do I get my hands on one? Well, as many of you probably know, you can talk to a few NPCs throughout the game that will give you a free random berry every single day. 
from a list of certain kinds. The Pretty Petal Flower Shop on Route 104? Considering this is where you obtain your watering can, I think everyone's heard of this one. This girl will offer a random berry from this list, which are basically all of the basic berries for the most part. That doesn't make them bad though, and in fact, some of these berries I would consider to be among the best. Berry Master on Route 123? Yeah, I, I mean, come on, it's in the name. And this sweet little berry farm he's got going on here is hard to forget. He will actually give you two random berries from a list of 10. These are primarily used for polka blocks, but they are definitely an upgrade in that department over the common berry types. And I'm even willing to bet that many of us have heard about the gentleman located in Lily Cove City as well, providing yet another free berry every day. And it is here where it starts to get interesting, as this fine gentleman here will offer you all of the berries that the Pretty Petal Flower Shop offers, but with two new ones thrown into the mix. Citrus and those lum berries that I mentioned earlier. Now, that's already four free berries on a daily basis, but what you may not realize is the fact that there are four other NPCs in the game that also grant you a free berry every single day. Remember that kid on Route 114? Probably not if I had to guess, but he will offer you a random berry from this pool of options. Have you ever tried talking to this beauty on Route 120? If you do, she'll give you one of these berries every day. What you get is based on your trainer ID, actually, and these are particularly rare. How about this girl in Sutopolis City? She gives you two additional berries on a daily basis. Move over, Berry Master. Someone's looking to steal your thunder. And if that wasn't enough, the Berry Master's wife will give you a berry every day as well. I'm sure most of you knew that you could get four free berries a day, but nine? Game Freak really took berries to the next level when they hit Gen 3. And I'm not sure we've ever seen such a heavy emphasis on one of our favorite held items since. Tip number four, infinite powers. There was no shortage of Pokemon in Gen 3 that lacked great coverage options when it came to their overall movesets, but that's where hidden power came into help. In a normal run-of-the-mill playthrough, you obtain one single copy of this TM from an old lady in Fortree City, right around badge number six. But what if I told you that you could buy as many copies of this move as you wanted before the fourth gym? Well, after obtaining the TM for secret power from this ace trainer over on Route 112, a new shop will open up in the Slateport Plaza offering the purchase of both hidden power and secret power. So if you feel like you've wasted your hidden power on a Pokemon, or you accidentally overwrote secret power with another move and want to make a secret base, this lovely lady has you covered. Tip number five, move deleter before gym three? Move deleters are a very small but important part of any playthrough in most Pokemon games. You definitely want a way to remove unwanted HMs from Pokemon you were forced to use them on. Unfortunately, the move deleter in these games is located all the way in Lily Cove City, which means you'll need access to at least badge number five before you could actually use the service. And even then, you'll need to trek halfway across the entire map, dodging trainers and wild Pokemon along the way just to get there at that point in the game. Luckily for us, there's another method that allows allows us to remove these unwanted HMs, and it can be accessed soon after the second badge. Welcome to daycare. As we all know, keeping team members inside the daycare allows them to level up and learn new moves. But what you may not know is that when a new move is learned within the daycare, the old move that it replaces on your Pokemon is not random. When a Pokemon in the daycare learns a new move, it will always replace the move in the first slot. And yes, that includes HMs as well. Tip number six, there's no substitute for, oh wait, never mind. In Pokemon Emerald, there are actually 10 different move tutors that you have access to before the post game. You may have run into some in your playthroughs, but running into all of them is pretty unlikely unless you're looking to talk to literally every person in the game. Most of the moves you can learn are pretty gimmicky and or just a little bit on the weaker side, but there are a few standouts. Substitute being one of them and perhaps arguably the best. Substitute is just one of those moves that tends to break the game's typical mechanics and allows you to pull off some wins that you otherwise couldn't without it. You can find the tutor for this move hanging out on the rooftops of the department store in Lily Cove City. Double Edge, Rollout, and Sleep Talk can be pretty interesting choices as well. So if you're looking for some extra options to optimize your strategy, take a look at these moves and see if there's something in here you can utilize. Tip number seven, early pickups. 
Zigzagoon's ability and pickup is very useful to have in the early game, allowing you to grab items such as super potions, repels, pokeballs, and even rare candies, all of which can add up to a lot of money saved in the long run. But what you may not know is that Zigzagoon actually has a 1% chance to pick up either a Nugget or a King's Rock, even at the lower levels. Having a King's Rock before reaching gym number one is pretty huge, especially when you consider all of the Pokemon that learn multi-hit moves earlier on in the game. Moves such as Fury Swipes and even Bullet Seed. And later on in the game, Linoon is still capable of picking up items such as White Herbs and extra copies of the TM for rest before the Pokemon League if you want them. Very underrated ability in my opinion. Tip number eight, grinding is fun when you don't have to do it. Grinding is unfortunately a reality for the older titles, but you don't need to limit your options to just grinding on different kinds of wild Pokemon. The daycare method is already a fantastic way to gain experience quickly for two Pokemon at the same time, especially in the Sapphire and Ruby versions, because for some reason they nerfed it a little bit in Emerald, although it's still totally worth it in that game too, I promise. This is a great tool, but it still requires your attention somewhat, having to go back and forth for hours if you're playing on handheld. So instead of doing any of that, let's take the fantastic experience per hour you get from the daycare method and make it AFK. All you need is a bike, preferably the acro bike as it works a bit better for this, and a way to hold down the up key on your handheld, controller, or keyboard. I find using a rubber band and a pen or something like that on handhelds at least to work the best. And to be honest, this method is mostly for the handheld players anyway, as you can always speed things up pretty quickly while emulating. And with that, this video is now over. I hope everyone found these tips helpful, and let me know if you guys have any lesser known tips for Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald in the comments. I'm always interested in learning new things about my favorite games. And as always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. That's it for me, I'll see you next time.